Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to set up your Google Workspace for your NHN integration. If you want to connect to your Google Drive, Google Calendar, Google Sheets, or other Google's APIs, this quick tutorial is for you. I will walk you through the process step by step. This video is part of a series where each episode delivers bite-sized, specific knowledge to help you on your NHN learning journey. I'll refer back to this content often in the other videos. To use Google Workspace services and access Google APIs, you will need a simple setup in Google Cloud Platform GCP. This one-time configuration lets you access your Google services in all future NHN workflows. Cloud services like Google Cloud are surprisingly affordable and often free for learning purposes. This includes major providers like AWS, GCP, and Azure. To help users learn their platforms, this company provides generous free or low-cost tiers. This makes it perfect for exploring and experiments during your learning journey. Without further delay, let's get started. First of all, we need a new workflow, and then you get a checker manually. We need to add a Google Drive for testing. And let's let the search files and folders. Now in this page, you see the first one credential to connect with. I have a couple of accounts, but we will need to create a new credentials. I will watch you through together. In this page, uh, make sure you choose the OAuth tool that we are going to create. Now we need to head to the Google Cloud platform. Open up a new browser tab and browse the cloud.google.com. In this page, you need to sign in. If you already have your Google account, you can go on and use it. Otherwise, just create a new account. Click on the console. The first thing that you need to do is to create a new project. Click on the new project and give it a name like NHN platform. Right, and then create. Now, make sure you select the white project. And then what we are going to do is to enable some APIs. We click on the menu and select the APIs and services and then Enable APIs and Services. Click on the Enable APIs and Services button, and then search for Google Drive APIs. There will be a couple of APIs that we need to enable, and Google Drive is the first one. We click on the Enable button and wait for it to be done, wait for it to get complete. Now it is OK. And then we go back and enable another APIs. The next one we are going to do is the Google People APIs. This is for Google Contacts. In the same way, we enable this API. Now, the third one, in the same way, we enable the Google Calendar API. And we have two more to go. We enable the Google uh, the Gmail API that we are going to read our Gmail message. Now the last one is the Google Sheet. We need to use Google Sheet. In, in NHN, the Google Sheet is a very useful tool 
all APIs enabled is done. The next step we are going to do is to prepare an OAuth consent screen. We go to the menu and select the APIs and services and OAuth consent screen. We click on the Get Start and this screen will be popped up when we need a consent from user. We name it the app name NHN and provide a email address for support. It doesn't matter, just give your email address. Now in the audience, we select the external. And the contact information again, you just give it a, your email address. Finally, just check this and then create. And that's it for the consent screen. Now we have one more thing we need to do before we create the credential, which is we go to the menu and go to the APIs and services and go back to the OAuth consent screen. We go to the clients. Oh no, uh, we, we should go to the audience and scroll down to the test users. Now you need to add email address that the account you want to connect the to. For me, I'm inputting the same account. You can add more if you need. Click on the save and now it's done. So the next step, we are going to create the OAuth credential. We click on the menu again, APIs and service, and then credentials. Now we click on the create credentials button and choose the OAuth client ID. Okay, in the application types, select the web, web application. And for the name, just give it NHN. It doesn't matter. Now, you can see we need a redirect URL. And it is in your NHN page. You just need to copy it and place it in. Now, you just need to create. And you have your client's ID and client's secrets for your API connections. Make sure you store it in a safe place and don't publish it just like what I did here. I'm going to remove this before I actually publish this video. Now, let me go back to the NHN. I copy the client's ID, which is neat in the connections. And then I also need the client's secrets. Just copy the secrets and place it right there. And then I need to sign in, click the sign in button and select or log into your accounts that you want to connect to. Hit to continue. And here is all the permission we need to access the Google Drive. And this is a consent form to consent to the permission. Now, all the connections are successful. And now, you are better to name a meaningful name for this credential. That's it for this setup. And we are going to test. Okay, let's add a add filter and select folder. And when you click on it, it will bounce the folders of your Google Drive. And you can see the connection is well connected. Let me confirm this and go to the Google Drive. You can see I have these two folders and which is displayed in the NHN list. So it doesn't matter. I just uh, select the root and hit the test step. And you can see there's something that returned. It means that it is working. Now, let's test the other surfaces. The next one we are going to test is the Google Contest. 
let's add a Google Contacts note. And we choose Get Many Contacts. Similar as before, we need to create a new credentials for Google Contacts. So we can use the same client's ID and client's secrets. Just that we need to sign in and consent with another set of permission we need. Like for now, we need to have a permission for the Google contest. And it is successful. Give it a better name. And then we save it. Now we can test the APIs if it is working. We just hit the test steps. Oh, there's some problem. Let me just find it. Is it because the return all? No, I don't think so. Oh, I see it's a field. So I need to select the field that I want to retrieve. It's not about the return all. So let me hit the test again. And it is working now. I have retrieved the contest of my in my Google account. Now, let's test another one. Google Calendar. Let's add a Google Calendar note. And we select Get Many Events. Similar as before, we need to create a new credential and use the same client ID and client secret. And we need to sign in to a consent and get all the permission needed. We name it credential and that's it. Let's test this calendar. And when I click the, the list the calendar, you can see it retrieve my calendars. I have uh, two calendars here in my account. And let me select the holidays and click on the test. And you can see the workflow is working. The coming event is the mother days. Now let's test another one. We're going to test the Gmail. Let's add a Gmail. And we get many method, uh, message. Again, we create a new credential for that. And also the current secret. Sign in and do a consent. Here we go. Give it a better name. And then we do a testing. Let me just uh, tap on the add filter. Um, maybe I just uh, limit to one uh, so that it will be quicker. And I'm able to retrieve one message from my email account. The last one is the Google Sheet. Let's add a Google Sheet note. And select the get roles in sheet. Before we get into it, let's create a new Google Sheet for it to read. Let me give it a name called demo test and give it some content. Name and telephone number. Our phone and my phone number is one two three four five six seven eight. And let's see if the API is able to read it. 
Now, same as the other node, let me add a credential with the same client's ID and secret. Sign in to get a proper consent. Get the white permission and successful. Let me list the document and you will see the demo test is right there. It means that it, it is able to see my account. And let me list the Google's, Google Sheet. Just ignore the other things. Do a test step. You can see the information is retrieved. So that is all for the testing. And you, you can see that all the things is set up well. If you need to use other APIs from Google, you can do similar things and include other APIs. Here I have a bonus technique for you to maintain your test OAuth account. If you use your OAuth account long term, you might notice that your OAuth access stop working after about a week of inactivity. That's because the special key called Refresh Token, which keep your app connected, expired in seven days for test accounts. Don't worry, I'm going to share with you a super simple trick to make this key active. This is perfect for learning or experimenting. Of course, you can verify your Google Cloud project to get the key last forever. But this is a bit complicated and involves a lot of steps. For testing, my method is way easier and just as effective. Plus, it will help you understand how OAuth work behind the scene. Here's the plan. We will set up an automated workflow in NDXN. This workflow will ping your Google account every few days. Let's dive in and set it up. We are going to create a workflow to maintain this Google account. Uh, we can make use of this workflow and do some modification. Okay, we don't need that many notes. We can just remove them and leave in the Google Drive. We need a new trigger. Let's go to add another trigger and look for the schedule. And let's make the schedule every two days. Now, we don't need the menu checker. We can remove it and link the new checker. We can do a test with the Google Drive. Since we just want to connect to the account, so we just uh, limit to one to make the retrieval quicker. And do some test, and we have something back from the APIs and the information doesn't matter uh, because we just want to do a connection. Now we are done. Give it a better name. Let's call it maintenance. Account maintenance. And then finally, make sure you set this info active. This is all for the setup. I hope this video is useful for you. I see you in the next time.